The first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Over humanity! The fires of frustration and discord are burning and Let us not forget for a moment the toils and effort that lie ahead. They say that those who forget their history are condemned to repeat it. This is the History Lessons Podcast with certified financial planning practitioner Patrick Huey, author of History Lessons for the Modern Investor and your guide to financial wisdom in the past, present, and future. You ready? Good. Let's get historical. Historical. Indeed, this is the History Lessons Podcast for the week of August the 7th, 2023. Hashtag it, HL, the number four, T-M-I. If you're a modern investor seeking some historical perspective these days, well, friends, once again, you found yourself in the right place. This week, we're talking about bond rating beefs and murderous ambitions. But first, the news. Yeah, in the news last week, non-farm payrolls rose by 187,000 jobs in in July, slightly missing consensus. It was the second consecutive month below 200,000, which hasn't happened since the early days BC. That's before COVID. But civilian employment, which includes small businesses and startups, rose by 268,000 in July, pushing the unemployment rate down to 3.5%. Now, as recently as June, that's this June, 2023, the Fed had projected that the jobless rate would average 4.1% in the fourth quarter. Given their inflation projections over the last couple of years, that may count as close enough for government work. Anyway, the service sector per the ISM non-manufacturing index declined to 52.7 in July, not in recessionary territory just yet, but growing at a slower pace and close to that mark of 50, which indicates contraction. Speaking of contraction, the ISM Manufacturing Index increased to 46.4 in July, rebounding a bit, but still firmly in contraction territory, where it's been now for nine months in a row. Oh, and the United States was once again downgraded by a bond rating agency. This time, Fitch noticed, quote, fiscal deterioration and erosion of governance, end quote. What's their beef, you ask? Well, it could be that the deficit through June is $1.39 trillion. And that's already above the 2022 full year deficit of $1.37 trillion. Seems the only thing not even close to contracting right now is federal spending. Next up, we'll charge the Wayback Machine and head back in time for this week's history lesson. But first, this word from our sponsor. Interest rates are rising, and your annuity, purchased in the last decade, might not be keeping up, which means your financial plan may be falling behind. So if you own a deferred annuity, fixed, indexed, or variable worth more than $250,000, now is the time to review it and make sure it is doing all that it can for you and your financial plan. Let us help you keep your retirement on track. Introducing Victory Independent Planning. VIP turns complex financial matters into clear and confident solutions so you can relax and enjoy retirement whenever it arrives. Get the Annuity Review Kit now. This complimentary kit includes a variety of checklists, resources, and ebooks to review the fees, features, and flexibility, or lack thereof, in your current annuity contract. It will even help you assess your overall investment goals and the people who are offering you advice. Get the kit today, because you can't teach an old annuity new tricks. To learn how VIP can help you review your annuity, Click on the link in the show notes or go to victoryindependentplanning.com slash annuity dash review. That's victoryindependentplanning.com slash annuity dash review. Sign up for peace of mind today. Alexa, charge the Wayback Machine and set it for the year 48 BC. Charging Wayback Machine. On August 9th, 48 BC. 
Julius, Julius Caesar's troops defeated his rival and co-ruler Pompey at the Battle of Pharsalus. The Romans were averse to having an outright king. Caesar's victory effectively makes him their sole ruler. Yet he was always careful never to be called a sovereign for fear of alienating the common people who supported him. In 49 BCE, he declared himself dictator, breaking with the Roman tradition of a limited term for the position of consul. His rule saw an increased concentration of power in the hands of that ruler himself, which led to concerns about his intentions and the erosion of the traditional Republican system. He was murdered for this ambition, if not for his actions, in 44 BC, his enemies inflicting over 20 puncture wounds while he stood and then fell in the Senate House. Well, what's in a name? Indeed, does it matter if a dictator for life is called king, emperor, or some other impressive but understated title? No, probably not, because the results are the same. The parallel in finance and economics is the use of the R word, recession. For example, during the 2007 through 2009 global financial crisis, the term recession was not officially used by the George W. Bush administration until it was well underway and patently obvious. Instead, officials often referred to it as a slowdown or an economic challenge. Well, it was both. Similarly, during the Great Depression of the 1930s, political leaders often used optimistic language to inspire hope and promote faith in the economy's eventual recovery. The avoidance of using the word recession is not limited to a specific political party or ideology. Various administrations, regardless of their affiliation, have been cautious about the terminology they use to describe economic conditions. Call it something else, and we can ignore the, the reality. But why? Sure, public communication about the economy is a delicate matter, and administrations strive to strike a balance between acknowledging challenges and maintaining confidence. And I'll even give them the benefit of the doubt that their choice of words is calculated to shape public perception and prevent unnecessary panic. But ignoring reality is what ultimately leads to even greater panic and poor decision-making at a much higher and destructive level. There's no question. It isn't a matter of if we will have a recession, it is a matter of when. Business cycles are just that, cycles. Now, pretending that economic progress doesn't ultimately peter out and recess from time to time inflicts unnecessary pain. There's no panic necessary, and there's no need to get your knives out. Wayback Machine disengaged, returning to the year 2023. Finally this week, it is on to the mailbag. You've got mail. This message came in through our Substack page. You mentioned in your book, History Lessons for the Modern Investor, hey, thanks for reading, that there are a few books that must be owned, not just read. Can you name a few of them? Sure. Uh, the first one, and, and it's in my book, I mentioned is Manias, Panics, and Crashes. A History of Financial Crises. That's by uh, Robert uh, Aylber and Charles Kindleberger. Uh, this is my go-to in times of trouble. Got me through 2000, 2008's financial crisis and the COVID era financially and mentally intact, more or less. I'm sure it'll come in handy again someday. I just hope it gets the chance to gather dust for a while uh, on my bookshelf. Um, Next up is the Wall Street Journal Guide to the 50 Economic Indicators That Really Matter by Simon Constable and Robert E. Wright. And this is a good one for more mundane day-to-day -day reference. Now, there aren't really 50 economic in indicators that matter, but this is a good summary of what market analysts pretend to look at while playing fantasy football. And finally, uh, I'm going to go with econo spinning. Uh, How to Read Between the Lines When the Media Manipulates the Numbers by Gene Epstein. And this one's a good reminder on just how easy it is to spin government data, especially when you are the government. Well, my fellow historians, that's all for this week. Check out my book, History Lessons for the Modern Investor. It's available on Amazon.com. And be sure to do all that social stuff, the liking, the sharing, the following, all those things. We're available on Substack. Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, so pretty much wherever you go to get your pods, you can follow us. And keep sending me those messages for the mailbag. 
Until next week, when we'll take another rollicking romp through the past and make an investment in your financial future with history lessons for the modern investor. See you next week.